The question really is about the quantum spin Hall effect. And then I probably should say a bit more about the spin Hall effect first, which is a, an effect that, that uh, semiconductor uh, transport people were after, say in the early 2000s, an effect due to spin orbit coupling in these materials that could lead to uh, new functionalities for spintronic devices, which, which would be then switches that, that dissipate very small energy. So we were working on our Würzburg material uh, to study this effect when there came a uh, prediction uh, from two colleagues from Philadelphia, two theorists, that there might also be a quantized version of this spin Hall effect, where actually uh, you would get a quantum Hall effect at zero magnetic field. The question really was, how do you do such an experiment? What is the right material to, uh, to use it in? The suggestion of Kane and Mellet at that time was to use graphene, but then a graphene with an artificially high a spin orbit coupling, uh, also of next nearest neighbor type, which was not very physical. I knew at that time that, that our material not only had a mercury telluride, not only had a strong spin orbit coupling, but it also has a weird inverted band structure. And because of this inverted band structure, it, it had a, a surface state uh, occurring even when the bulk was insulating, metallic surface state. I thought this might be something related to this, this Kane and Mellet proposal. And I discussed this band structure with Su Cheng Zheng, a uh, theorist from Stanford, gave him a, uh, a thesis, a PhD thesis, describing our band structure calculations. Very soon, uh, he came back with a theory, which is now known as the BHZ theory, showing that indeed, if you make a quantum wall of mercury telluride, you can expect to see the quantum spin hall effect. Well before this paper was published, we were already doing the experiment because we were talking with the guys. Around the same time the BHZ paper was published, in our experiments around Christmas, we saw quantization of the spin hall effect quantized at conductance in very small nanostructures made out of mercury telluride quantum wells. The method that we use in the end is, is transport physics. We measure the uh, conductance of uh, electronic devices. This starts with the growth of the material. Uh, our materials are pretty special semiconductors. We have to grow them layer by layer in something we call a molecular beam epitaxy machine, which is ultra high vacuum technology. So that's very extensive growth technology. Then we have to pattern these, um, these samples into very small structures, uh, just like the uh, transistors in the chips that you use in your cell phone. We use very similar structures to do our, what we call transport experiments, to really see the effects that, that we want to see because they occur at very small distances, so we have to make very small devices. For that we have a lithography lab in Würzburg. And once we have our devices, we do these conductance measurements, which we call transport experiments. We usually need to do them uh, at very low temperatures, so we use very extensive cryogenic equipment, cryostats, uh, to perform them. The key findings of this, this first experiment were, well, actually pretty prosaic. What we saw is a, a quantized conductance of these devices in this so-called quantum spin hall regime. And quantized means quantized in the sense of a quantum hall effect. Uh, there is this thing uh, that, that physics, physicists have discovered, which is the a conductance quantum, which is the square of the electron charge divided by Planck's constant. And that conductance actually is what we also observed in our devices. Later on, if, if you develop topology further in, in, in other materials, um, we have done things like discovery of the quantum Hall effect in a three-dimensional topological insulator. Uh, again, this was possible because of the high uh, crystalline quality of our materials. More recently, um, we have been looking at, at a topological superconductivity. There we uh, have found a, a, a so-called 4pi dependence of the superconducting proximity effect on the difference between the superconducting electrodes you have in these devices. And that's a, a pretty sure sign that you have uh, what some people call Majorana modes in your material, which are the modes that give rise to Majorana bound states at zero energy if you can can localize them. So they're, they're a sign that indeed you have topological superconductivity going on in these materials and that in principle you could be able to use it for topological quantum computing. 
The main relevance of these findings is, is the realization that physicists missed something when they developed band structure theory in the 30s. It's, it's a rather big, big omission. You can really look at uh, papers from the 30s and you see that people are talking about surface states and are very close to the realization there could be surface states that are intrinsically linked to the band structure, but they never really made that step. The surface states of our material, they also were something that the community knew about for something like 20 years before this connection came with topology. And this connection with topology, of course, is a very, very strong thing because now you can, can use all kinds of, of topological mathematics on the description of these band structures and you can describe further effects. The important discovery really was that band structures can have topological properties and that they lead to totally new physics in these materials. There are also maybe applications, uh, but that's secondary, I guess. Uh, the applications could be uh, that these S channels we saw in the two-dimensional quantum uh, spin hall effect uh, could uh, give you uh, very low power possibilities for computation, but you have to get the effect to room temperature and that's, that's not so easy. Uh, the other thing is that these Majorana modes I talked about in the topological superconductivity could be used to try topological quantum computing, which some people see as a very promising road to go for quantum computing. But again, these are things that, that still have to be demonstrated and we have to see how far all this develops. Doing the physics, of course, is, is very exciting of all these novel aspects. So one of the things that we're working on very extensively right now is this topological superconductivity. Um, our group actually is kind of a newbie in this field. We have little uh, superconducting background. It's close enough to us, of course, because we are transport physicists. So we're developing this in, in, in many different directions, many different systems. One important thing is to take it to, to high frequencies where things are a lot more stable for topological superconductivity. Another direction that's becoming very important is, is looking at Dirac and Weyl systems where we can make topological band structures that mimic the dispersion of elementary particles. This allows us to actually go after some effects that particle theorists have predicted for imaginary particles. We can actually now create a band structure in our semiconductor devices that mimics the Hamiltonians that these people study and we can try and demonstrate the effects that they have been predicting. A final road is that, that we work with, this is with a different material system, which is a magnetic topological insulator. Uh, which shows something called the quantum anomalous Hall effect, which is um, a single spin version of the quantum spin Hall effect. And this shows very good quantum uh, Hall uh, quantization at zero magnetic field, but at uh, still at very low temperatures. But this is something that the metrology people are very interested in, because developing a uh, quantum uh, metrology stand quantum metrology standard that works at zero magnetic fields can have uh, big implications uh, for uh, for their labs so we collaborate for example with ptb braunschweig about this we hope you have enjoyed this video and for more videos go to freakphysics.com